Chalk Talk is brought to you by Isolite, the emergency lighting experts. Stay educated, my friends. Robin William once said, spring is nature's way of saying, let's party. Today, we're going to talk about extending our party for our inverters with extended run times. Good morning, everyone. I'm Matt Bird, Eastern Regional Manager, along with our co-host, Greg Keel, Western Regional Sales Manager. As always, Evan Ackman will be leading the Chalk Talk today. So, Evan, please take it away. Great. Thanks, Matt. And that was uh, that's probably one of your best quotes yet. Um, as Matt said, we're talking about extended runtime on inverters today. We're actually going to talk about a little bit more than that as we go. But uh, this is one of those questions that sort of comes up often. And you know, I think people find the cut sheets a little bit confusing. And so we thought this would be a great opportunity on the uh, week before Memorial Day to get this one in the library. So as we traditionally do, we're going to do this in three sections. We'll start with background. Uh, we'll just touch on NFPA 101. Uh, just very quickly because it sets a minimum uh, set of performance characteristics for emergency lights. Then we'll talk a little bit about the scenarios where you might need more runtime than what's mandated by the standard. We'll then get into the meat of the chalk talk, which is going to be how you extend runtimes on inverters. There's some simple things that you can do by just you know specifying an option, or you might have to go and do a little bit of math. We have a bonus section on motor load calculations because oftentimes that gets sort of lumped in with extended run times because of the use cases for motors on inverters. And then we'll wrap up with our contact information as well as a couple just sort of passing thoughts about uh, how extended run times work and some other things that you might want to just keep in mind. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, we almost always start with NFPA 101, and that's no different today, but we're going to be very brief. As a reminder, there's a couple of things that are mandated by NFPA 101. When there's an emergency, we have to make sure that the lights are on within 10 seconds. That's really never an issue when it comes to inverters. Um, but the thing that is going to come up with all emergency lights is that the lights have to remain above 60% of their initial illumination value at the end of the 90 minute period. That's what NFPA says is a um, is the mandatory minimum runtime throughout the United States. And one sort of fun fact, or maybe something that you've noticed, if you just pull like a traditional emergency light out of the box or an inverter, and you, you just run it the first time, you're gonna notice that the runtime is actually a lot longer than that 90 minutes. One of the things that we do is that we sort of over provision the batteries because batteries are consumable devices, they lose charge over time. Uh, over provisioning it means that you're still gonna stay above that 60% illumination level for 90 minutes, really for a long time, you know, for 10, 15, 20 years, whatever, whatever that case might be. So that sort of gets us to the question of what if you need more than that and why might you need more than that? As I said, NFPA 101 really just sort of mandates a set of minimum criteria. There are local and regional codes that sort of vary by building type um, where longer run times for emergency lighting are required. Uh, you know, we see two hour run times in places like hospitals uh, in certain areas of, uh, of hotels that are sort of uh, refuge in place. We see storm shelters and tornado shelters where mandatory four hour run times are present. And that's really because rather than trying to get lighting so that people can get out of a building, we're trying to keep the lighting on so that people can shelter in place there. There's also performance and preference reasons that exist. So not for safety reasons, but if you're in an application where an emergency is just a power outage, but you wanna be able to keep people inside, think of like a hotel lobby or you know, a, a residential mixed use space. Uh, if you wanna keep retail lights on, even if there's a power outage, um, that might be an application for extended run times for inverters. Again, not safety related, but preference or performance related. And the good news is, is no matter what the reason is that you need this, we have you covered. And we have you covered in sort of three different ways. And we're going to start with the most simple one. If you look at our E3 and E3 mini cut sheets, you're going to notice that there's an EB option on there. EB in our nomenclature stands for extended battery. Um, that we sort of use it to mean two different things. One is extended runtime, like we're talking about today. 
We also use EB in some instances to indicate that there's remote capacity on an exit sign. Um, EB means extra battery or extended battery, which is sort of how this all works. There's a couple of things you have to keep in mind though when you select this option. There's a difference in behavior between the E3 Mini and the E3. On the E3 Mini, when you select EB, you increase the runtime to two hours as you'd expect, but we do mandate that the maximum capacity on the inverter is dropped a little bit. So from 125 and 250 down to 100 and 200 respectively. That same uh, sort of asterisk doesn't exist on the E3. When you select EB on E3, it goes to two hour run times, but we do not reduce the maximum load. We actually change the batteries out for those applications. And that's all well and good, but it may prompt the question, well, one, what, what happens if you need more than two hours? Is there a different EB option? Uh, no. And you don't actually have an EB option on the E3 Mac, which is probably where you're going to want to use it the most, frankly. Uh, at least in our experience, that's when we end up sort of writing letters and, and doing the math for people. And so what happens there? Instead of using an EB, we actually move to what we're just gonna colloquially call the product derating method. And it's important to realize that while we talk sort of informally about inverters and their wattage rating as just sort of what it is, right? This is a thousand watt inverter. When we're considering batteries in runtime, we have to actually realize that a thousand watt inverter is actually 1500 watt hours because we need to run for 90 minutes. And so that transition from watts to watt hours or from VA to VA hours, that actually allows us to go and do the math to figure out how long these things will run, will run for. So you can actually consider that 1000 watt inverter has 1500 watt hours of battery. It actually has a little bit more because of that over provisioning thing. But if we wanna calculate run times for lower loads, for example, if we have 500 watts of load on a 1500 watt hour inverter, that means 1500 divided by 500 means you get three hours of runtime. So it's a linear uh, extension from 90 minutes to 180 minutes, twice the runtime at half the load. That still applies when you go even lower. So 250 watts of load on our 1500 watt hour inverter means you get 360 minutes. So we've reduced the load by a factor of four, which means we've also increased the runtime by a factor of four. And that sort of linear extension is the easy way to do it and it will hold for all of the inverters. Now, there is an even more complicated set of math. And the good news is, is that even if you use that linear method that I just described, you're actually, the inverter is gonna perform better than that. And you know this is sort of a, a, an aside, if you need to get real sharp on your pencils for reducing the cost or you know, trying to minimize the inverter load because of space reasons, we can actually do a little bit more calculating to get more accurate run times when you reduce the power level. One cool thing about batteries is we tend to think of them as just having like a fixed capacity. It has you know, this many amp hours or this many effective watt hours, but those, those are based off of an assumption of how fast it's going to be charged and discharged. And so this is an example battery derating chart that I've thrown up here. Uh, I don't have any numbers on it because it doesn't actually match any real battery, but this is pulled from the battery derating chart for the E3 Mac uh, inverter batteries. And you can see that runtime goes out this way. So this is more, that's good. Um, battery voltage is just really sort of capacity you can figure out for this. And you can see that in this example, if we say that we're going to discharge sort of normally uh, on the rating of the inverter, let's just call that 90 minutes right there. Now we said that if you cut that load in half, you get to extend the runtime uh, by two, but it's actually better than that because what you can see here is if you start reducing the amount of current that you're pulling out of it. So if you're at less than sort of the standard discharge rate, uh, you actually get the runtime going up. And so rather than 360 minutes on that last example, you might be able to expect 
you know, 400 or 460 minutes as you reduce the load. Now, if you want to do this type of calculation, admittedly, you don't have access to these derating charts. They're a little bit confusing to read. But if you have an application where you're really trying to sharpen the pencil on runtime, don't hesitate to reach out to us because we do have these, these charts for all of the batteries that we use. And we can get a pretty accurate uh, calculation on exactly how long uh, something will run for. And that leads us to our last aside, um, motor ratings. The reason why we've tied this all together uh, for this chalk talk is particularly related to those areas of refuge questions that uh, you know I mentioned before that if you're meant to shelter in place, emergency lighting it really has to stay on for longer. That's where we start to see things like four hour runtime, six hour runtimes on the inverters. Often the question that comes along with that is, well, we also have an exhaust fan that we have to keep running or a pressurization fan that we have to keep running. How do we do that math? And the good news is it's actually fairly simple um, if you know what you're looking for. You really need two different pieces of information, the locked rotor current and the full load amperage, the FLA. And in reality, this FLA number is kind of the only thing that you need. FLA actually takes into account the horsepower rating, the efficiency of the motor, the power factor, and you can get to a pretty good guess of locked rotor current um, just by multiplying that FLA by six. And so what you're gonna wanna do is check the, the motor's uh, rating plate or the cut sheet. And you'll see, this is a, we've sort of doctored it up a little bit, but this is a real motor rating plate. You can see right here, that FLA will be called out specifically on all rating plates. Um, a lot of time they won't call out the locked rotor current. Um, if they don't call out FLA, they will call out uh, the horsepower, the efficiency, and the power factor. You can get the FLA by multiplying horsepower by efficiency by power factor. So the FLA is really the number that we're trying to get to. And what do we do with that? The FLA is really, you could think of it as just the sort of normalized load rating. It sort of takes into account all of those inefficiencies um, out, of the, uh, out of the motor. And the FLA really needs to be less than the rated amperage um, of the inverter. Um, as a reminder, if you need to get to amperage, it's just, you got to pull the voltage out of the wattage. So the amperage is going to be different at like 120 versus 277. Motors tend to use amperage. And so we're just going to call it amperage for, for simplicity's sake here. So I mentioned here that if you have motor horsepower, power factor, and efficiency, that is FLA. You got to make sure that your FLA is less than the amperage on the inverter. That is where you're going to get your runtime calculation. So if you're right on the rated uh, amperage, so if you do, if the inverter is rated for you know 10 amps and your FLA is 10 amps, you're going to get 90 minutes of runtime. The same extension that we calculated before based off of sort of more normal loads still applies here. The other thing that you have to keep in mind though is that locked rotor current. And I, if you've been on a, uh, an inverter training with me ever, and you've heard me say that, oh, you know, crest factor is important because it's sort of an indicator of design quality, but you don't really have to know exactly what it means. Well, when you're doing motor load calculations, you absolutely do have to know what it means because what we care about here is that the crest factor times the inverter amperage is less than that locked rotor current. You can see that I've actually done this um, simplification here. If you just use that FLA number times six, that's a really great approximation for locked rotor current. That's the uh, current that's necessary to make the motor start turning. The horsepower, power factor, and efficiency is how much current is necessary to keep it moving after it's going. So that's where those two numbers uh, actually come into play. This means we can get it turned on. This means that we've got the runtime that we need. And I've got some, some handy um, uh, sort of typical numbers and conversion factors at the bottom that you can reference when you go and look at this uh, presentation after the fact. Now, just to recap here, for almost every situation where you're trying to deal with like extended runtimes, just use the linear formula. It's gonna get you a quick answer that's gonna be accurate. It's a conservative estimate. You're gonna get more runtime 
than you actually expect by doing that, but that's okay. If you do want to do a more um, sort of scientific version of the calculation, or you're really trying to maximize the space usage or minimize the inverter space usage, um, give us a call and we can certainly help out to get to better numbers based off of battery derating charts and sort of your specifics of your job. Motor loads, you guys now have the information that you need to be uh, dangerous, but in general, that should probably be used for sort of budgetary purposes, just to let you know that, you know, this is sort of the, the range of values you're going to be in. You probably want the engineer to sign off on that decision or at least have us look at it and help make a recommendation. We're pretty good at digging through motor data sheets and getting to accurate information. The last thing I just want to mention here before we sign off is you have to also consider some environmental issues. We showed that battery derating chart and said, well, as you lower the effective discharge rate, you increase the effective capacity, you increase the runtime. It's important to note that temperature on the batteries has an inverse effect there. So the hotter they get, the lower, worse their performance. And you sort of work your way back towards that standard runtime. And so for, for 90 minutes of runtime, it's almost never an issue. And you know, we take a lot of that stuff into account when we design and size the inverters. But if you have longer run times, you got to make sure that you're you're taking into account that the HVAC system is probably going to be off um, for that six hours. So the batteries are going to get a little bit hotter. Again, this is something that we can help you with on the analysis. We have charts that sort of show this and we can kind of work our way through what it is. But keep in mind that battery temperature will uh, have an impact on the capacity of the inverter. Ergo, it will have a, an effect on the runtime. With that said, um, as always, we're going to send out a video version of this presentation. We'll also send out the slides so that if you want to uh, put your kids to sleep at night with my, uh, my voice or with this presentation, you can certainly do that. Uh, as always, I'm Evan Ackman. Greg and Matt are on the line. We know that you guys are out there on the front line fighting the good fight for us. So anything that we can do to support or assist you, please don't hesitate to reach out for us, whether that's on extended run times or anything else that you might want to know. Um, we're, uh, we're game to do whatever you guys need to get the assistance that you need. With that said, I'll stick around for questions. Uh, if you don't have questions, please have a great and safe Memorial Day. I hope the weather's going to be nice where you are. Uh, up here in the Philadelphia area, I've got some questions, but that's okay. It's almost summer. Have a great day and weekend, guys.